Hi, I'm Shal from Pangolin Photo Safaris and in this video I would like to talk to you about one of Sigma's art series lenses. This is the 14mm 1.8 lens. In this video I will show you some images that I've taken with the lens and we'll discuss the sharpness, the netting, the coma and so on. But before I continue in this video, if you do like our content that we provide, please don't forget to subscribe by clicking the bell button and you will be notified when the next video is ready. Okay, so let's start off with the build of the lens. The lens is built really nice and strong. Um, it feels also good in the hand. It's a very heavy lens though. It weighs at 1.17 kilograms. Uh, it got your built-in focus scale, which I found is quite nice. Definitely handy if you want to know where infinity is. Easy to find then with the scale there. You've got your autofocus, manual focus switch here. I found that the autofocusing was reliable. It was fast. I didn't have any issues with it. It was soft. I also didn't hear the, the focus motoring or searching for it. The manual focusing also really good. The focus ring here manual focus ring is so smooth it works so nicely um, when you move to the front of the lens you've got a lens cap here that just slides over your lens hood lens hood is built into this lens so you can't take it off like on other lenses if you look to the front element of this lens you will see it's round like a ball shape so with that said is that you can't use your normal filters that you just screw on to the front. So if you want to use filters, you're gonna to have to look at some third party filter holder, something like this, where you then just slide over your lens hood and then you use some of these filters that you just slide in, in front of this holder. Let's move here to the back of the lens. You will see there's a rubber seal here and this is of course for your splash and dust just to keep that out. Okay, so that is the build of the lens. Um, let's move on to some photos. Before I'm going to show you some of the on-field photos I've taken, I'm just going to show you a very simple test I made with a grid. The reason for this grid is it's white paper and then you can easily see the vignetting of um, the lens and of course the sharpness, center sharpness and the edge sharpness as well. So let's start off with vignetting. So vignetting in this image you can see clearly on the corners. This is at 1.8. Moving to 2.8 you can see already the change f4 almost not visible and f5.6 it is gone let's move over to center sharpness this is at 1.8 i'm quite impressed to see how sharp this lens is at all the way wide open at 1.8 in the center so it's 1.8 moving over to 2.8 f4 5.6 f8 f11 and if 16. So this lens is really nice and sharp in the center all the way from 1.8 all the way through to f16. Let's move over to the corners at 1.8 <clears throat> you can see yeah, it's a little bit soft it's falling off at the edges 2.8 is getting better f4 you can see a quite big change there 5.6 even better f8 nice and sharp and then f11 as well really nice and sharp in the corner when i move to f16 i find it is as well sharp but there is at the edges a little bit falling off of the sharpness in the corners so this lens is really nice and sharp over the whole frame from 5.6 all the way to f11 so let's move over to some sample photos Let's start off with astrophotography. These photos I've taken in the Namibian desert. The one on the right side you can see clearly is a little bit brighter than the one on the left hand side. So the one on the right hand side taken with aperture 1.8 with an ISO of 3200 and the one on the left aperture 
2.8 with ISO 3200. Let's zoom in into the center of these two photos and if you compare the two in the center, both are really nice and sharp with really good details. If we move to the corners of these two photos, also nice and sharp, the one on the 2.8. If we look at the one on the 1.8, sharpness is a little bit off but we can also clearly see some coma here if you look at the stars here it looks like the some of the stars getting wings and this is the coma that we see in this image so at 1.8 definitely some coma 2.8 already get a lot better let's go and have a look at some wildlife photos i took here's one of uh, elephant iso 2000 f10 Look how nice sharp this elephant is, the really nice details, if you go here the edges, this photo is clearly then edited, but the details is really nice visible. Moving over to some architecture, if I zoom in here at F16, just look at the details here written on the glass, it's so clear and visible. Go a little bit further in on F16. Look at all the details, lines are striped. So I think at F16 you can get really good details all over the image. So if we look at the next image, in this image I would like to talk about flare. My aim is almost straight into the sun. And just look at F16, nice starburst here, but there's hardly any flare in this, which is quite remarkable for this lens. I'm going to go to another one. This is a straight raw image. It's not edited at all. Again, if you look at the sun here, straight into the sun, very, very little um, flare in this image as well. While I'm at this image, I'm just going to see chromatic aberration. Um, if I zoom into this dark contrast areas here in the edges of this tree, I don't see any chromatic aberration on this image and in this photo I would like to show a little bit of depth of field you can see I was focusing here at the G area really nice and sharp when you look to the right you can see the depth of field blurring nicely to the right hand side to the left side of this frame you can see in the top corner here a little bit of lens distortion not much very little and this can easily be corrected in your post-processing program, your lens correction or profile correction. To sum up my opinion about this lens, I think the 1.8 aperture on this lens is a standout feature. The extra one and a third stop light intake is making a big difference compared to your common 2.8 wide angle lenses. With this said, I think this is a fantastic lens for astrophotography that will allow for lower ISOs and using faster shutter speeds. None of the typical lens issues are overwhelming and the image quality is fantastic. Details are nice and sharp with only minor fall off and stretching on the edges. If you are a landscape photographer, you will definitely enjoy this lens as it is sharp over the whole frame between f5.6 and 11. And even myself, as a wildlife photographer, wouldn't mind to have this lens in my bag for the occasionally wide-angle shot of an elephant. Thank you guys. This is from me. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you have anything you'd like to add, please leave in the comments down below. I'll come back to you as soon as possible. And I'll talk soon. Thank you.